Hello everybody, how are you doing? It's Vicious and welcome to another computer software review. Today I'm going to be showing you the WinX HD Video Converter Deluxe. This is a piece of software that I had recently featured on my channel because I gave away 25 copies of this software courtesy of WinX. So today I'm going to be doing a favor and also doing a review for the software. Now I recently did a review of some other video converter software as well from Wondershare, so I'm kind of going a little bit head to head with the two, but I do want to separate them because they are totally different pieces of software. So I've already got it open here. We have WinX HD Video Converter Deluxe open, and this is the main interface that you're faced with. It's a pretty simplistic interface, which is always really good for these kind of programs because if it's too convoluted, it becomes hard to use, and you might have features in there that you don't even know about that you'll never use. We have at the top starting adding files. We can do that with the add file button or we can drag and drop which is what I usually do. We have the ability to add YouTube videos as well and we have remove, clear, and options. Our options are pretty simple. We have a, a naming interface here where we can cho choose um, wild cards to name our files, the audio language, and the profile settings. There are presets for different devices in here and the neat thing about these is that you can go and modify the profile presets in case you find that you want to tweak them a little bit more than what the default is. Moving down below we have where we have our actual files integrated. What I like about this is that it shows the length of the video, it shows your resolution, your aspect ratio, the codec for your audio, the bit rate for your audio, and the um, sample rate for your audio. But what they have here that didn't have in Wondershare, which I think is very important, is they have your frame rate. So you can see that this video here that I made with my Nikon camera is 29.97 frames per second. If you get these things wrong, sometimes it can be very problematic when you're doing conversions. So there's that, and we have start and end time, the output folder. You can change your output folder. You can, of course, preview your video and take snapshots of it as well. Now here's the muscle of the program where you're converting it to your different formats. The general video here is the uh, AVI, MP4, AVC, MPEG, Windows Movie Video, um, the Apple and Movie format, and YouTube format. And then you can go into specifics like DVD. This is going to be when you're actually burning something to a DVD so that it may play on a traditional DVD player. So this is a really nice thing to have because I have used older free programs before that don't do it ni as nicely as this program will. You have the ability to do that in several formats. HD video, of course, is what most people are using these days. Apple, which is going to be Apple devices, iPad and iPhone. Sony, which is the video game consoles. Microsoft, again, has got video game consoles and, of course, their media players like the Zune. Cell phones, you have Android, Blackberry, Nokia, General, Personal Data Assistant, and the Zen, and just audio only. So I, like I said, I don't want to compare too much directly, but one of the things I noticed about this is while we have lots of presets, they're more general presets. When it comes to devices, I don't have every single device I can think of listed with its own preset. It has general presets. However, since you can tweak your presets to your own device preferences, that's not so bad. Now moving along into the more detailed features, once you've chosen your preset, you'll get to look at all of your actual options down below. So I'm going to stick with the, uh, the general here and go to MP4 format, and you'll see that we can choose our quality of the audio, the sample rate. You can do an audio boost here, and you can choose a format. And then you have your video quality and a bit rate, frame rate, the output format, the codec to using it, and then of course you have your the uh, settings for the aspect ratio and the sizing. Now here is the features that I'm going to tell you stand out here. I like the audio boost. This is nice because sometimes you have quiet recordings and you might want to boost those in the conversion process. And I like that it has the ability to keep the original size and aspect ratio. You don't want to accidentally change the size of your video if you don't need to for some specific reason. Doing that can change the quality and it can even make it look either stretched out and distorted or scrunched up. I've seen a lot of YouTube videos, people who actually upload content that was not encoded properly, and you'll see things that look like circles or actually ovals and you know because they didn't keep their aspect ratio correct. So this is a feature that's in here that was not in the other program that I do like to see. You have the ability to manually choose how many CPU cores that you want to use. I like this as well. If I want to go for full speed, I'm going to choose eight because I have eight cores available to me. 
But if I want to be working on another project or doing something with my computer, I might not want to give it every single uh, of my resource and give it, say, only half. That way I can go and work on other things in the background while this is encoding. And it also has an audio video sync button. I haven't had the use for this yet, but I imagine that if it works, that it could be very handy because sometimes audio video sync can get messed up. This probably does a frame by frame sync on it there. That way you don't get the audio video sync issues. Now the negative sides, first of all, I don't see MKV on here anywhere, which is the format that I prefer to work with with my videos. MP4 is pretty much exactly just as good. MKV only has a few features that MP4 does not have that no one would ever really ever use. I just prefer to work in that format. Just like the Wondershare program that I used before this one, it does not have the ability to choose a quality setting for my video. I have to choose a bit rate. So I don't like that because I really do like to use a quality encoding. And I'd also, both programs, when they give you the, the bit rate setting, they don't tell you if it's a variable bit rate or a fixed bit rate, or also known as a constant bit rate. So those are things you have to take into mind. When it comes to what this program supports, it supports a lot of different video formats, but when you go to encode, you don't have nearly the amount of power that I would like to have. Now, MP4 happens to default to AAC, which is great because that's the audio codec I like, but if you look at the video codecs, it's forcing me to use MPEG-4 when I would actually much prefer to use H.264. So not being able to use that makes no sense to me because this is a video conversion software and I know that that codec can work inside of the MP4 container. If I was to go over to AVC, for example, you'll see that H.264 is available here and it's our only choice. H.264 is by far my preferred codec. It's what's used in all the high definition video these days, but there's nothing wrong with using it for lower quality or older videos because it's just a very efficient codec. The other issue I noticed when I tested is using the MPEG-4 codec, when I encoded using all eight of my CPU cores, actually did not get all of my CPU cores to be fully loaded to 100% load. And that means that the conversion took longer than it had to. So I honestly had a lot of things to knock against the software. Unfortunately, it gets the job done and most people won't need any of the really advanced features that I'm talking about. But when you're selling a piece of software and you know that it can be integrated easily, it's just a matter of having the person who designs the software take the time to notice those things and integrate those features, then I'd rather go ahead and call out the flaws because maybe this will cause awareness to be raised and they can go and add those features into a future revision. So let's go pull up the uh, the home site for this software, when XHD Video Converter. And here we go, Video Converter Deluxe. And we're gonna go to their home site. And here is the big seller for this right now. Honestly, it's not very expensive, which is one of the great benefits of this feature of the software. $35.95 is almost half price of the other piece of software that we evaluated. And of course, you can get a trial of it as well to try it out. And they're throwing in their DVD Ripper Platinum program along with it. If you want to check out the site and look at all the features they have here, of course, they're going to give you an outview, an overview of all these things. You have the key features in here as well. And so I would recommend you go ahead and take a look at that and evaluate it with a free trial and see if this software is for you. So ultimately, I'd say that this software is very useful to have around. If you find yourself needing to convert videos over often to different formats and you're looking for a piece of software that can do it that's not very expensive, this is the one I would check out. As far as the things that I said I would like to see in here, those are big enough things for me that I would not use this software to do what I do on a regular basis to produce my YouTube videos. So unfortunately, this piece of software won't be sticking around on my computer, but then again, I'm a tech head and I have very specific needs. So I don't want you to take too much weight to what I say when it comes to the idea that I am not going to be personally using it. But that aside, the Winnex crew is very kind people. They have great customer service and I am very appreciative of them giving me the chance to give away some of their software. So I hope the review and evaluation was useful for everybody. If you have any questions, then make sure you ask them in the comments. And of course, I always appreciate comments towards the videos themselves to give me some constructive criticism. So I hope everybody enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. This was Vicious, and I'll see you next time.